Pillsbury Flour Mills Company, Miller's of Pillsbury's Best and Rich Flour, have the pleasure of presenting that amusing, laughable trio of lovable housewives, Clara, Lou, and Ann. Well, it's Friday the 13th. Today, some folks think everything goes wrong. But I can tell you one thing that won't go wrong, Mrs. Housewife, and that's your baking. With a bag of Pillsbury's Best and Rich Flour in your kitchen, you can bake on Friday the 13th or any other day without a flour worry in the world. For your protection, Pillsbury's Best is bake-proofed by actual baking tests four to six times every day, so it's absolutely dependable. It's truly an all-purpose flour, perfect for bread, rolls, pies, cakes, and cookies. The two B vitamins and iron that enrich Pillsbury's Best help supply essential nutrients to every member of the family. B vitamins for sound nerves, good appetites and the ability to thrive on hard work, iron for red blood. So this morning, get out one of your favorite recipes, or go ahead and try a new recipe you've been thinking about. You'll surprise yourself at how delicious baked foods really can be. That's because you always get good results when you bake with Pillsbury's Best, the flour that's been the choice of good cooks for over 70 years. Oh, and here's a little reminder when you shop today. If your grocer's flour shelf is empty, don't be alarmed. He's probably got a fresh shipment of Pillsbury's Best and Rich Flour on hand. He just hasn't found time to stock his shelf. Ask him for it. He'll be glad to get your bag of Pillsbury's Best from the stockman. And now, just for fun, let's listen to Clara Luanette. As Lou enters Em's house this morning, she hears Em starting what appears to be an ordinary telephone conversation. But, well, you know Em, so let's listen. Mr. Middleton, this is Emma Kruger. Oh, no, I guess I don't need no groceries this morning. Oh, a special, huh? Oh, hello there, Lou. Do you need any cauliflower and save at the grocery? Why, no, Em, I don't think I do just now. Hello. Uh, Miss Casey don't need no cauliflower neither. But say, Mr. Middleton, how much do you charge for your horse, William, by the hour? Yeah, the wagon throwed in. Well, it wouldn't be such heavy work, I don't think. I think it'd be a kind of a romantic evening for William if it's a moonlight night. Well, what are you talking about, Em? Oh, he'd just be strolling around over town. Well, I tell you, Mr. Middleton, I'm giving a party for my son, Junior, Saturday night. And I thought doing it by horse would be cute. Oh, no, I'll give the invites by phone. But I meant fill up the wagon with hay and give the kids a hay ride. Oh, please. Oh, do you think it's cute, Lou? That's wonderful. Won't you be tickled? Oh, excuse me, Mr. Middleton. Mrs. Casey thinks it's a cute thing to do. Well, listen. Now, uh, how much would that be? Oh, well, Junior cleaned the wagon when he come to give William his breakfast Sunday morning. Oh, okay. Two dollars would be all right. Okay. Well, thanks, Mr. Middleton. Junior will call for William sometime late Saturday afternoon. Okay. Bye. Oh, good, Lou. I am. Do you have to finish the hay? Oh. Oh, I don't suppose Mr. Middleton has got enough hay. Me, me or Junior will have to scurry around looking for it. They ain't there so many barbecue stands west of town. Finding a farm is like looking for a haystack with a needle. So now, well, what time will the party start? Well, Junior's telling him 8 o'clock, but he says they dribble in. So I don't know what time it'll start. But, Lou, I tell you, I was just sick over Nancy not going to that harvest hop with him. I suggested Miller do little. I said, well, honey, you and Miller have been traipsing around for years. I don't know why you shouldn't traipse a little longer. He says, traipse is right. But I did get him to promise she could come to the party. Well, Miller mixed into the car that way will be all right. She's a nice little girl. Yes, and there'll be lots of other boys. Maybe she can find somebody she likes just as good. Well, Miller is good. They done at parties now. Never sounded very jolly to me. He says, uh, all we got to do is roll up the rugs. Well, that's easy. Mine rolls up when you walk on them. Well, and if they done any jitterbugging, and I suppose they do, they'd sure have to roll up the rug. Well, they want a phonograph and plenty of records. Have you got anything later than whispering and jada? Well, no, Em. You know, I broke all my records excepting the Indian love call. And I think I've got, um... What is the Minnetonka? Yeah, but it's scratched and goes off the groove when you get about halfway through. Well, some of the kids can gather up some. I suggested to Junior that they play some games. He says, oh, my, that'd be stagnant. Oh, my, but there's an awful lot of good games they could play. Lincoln and musical chairs, and they can sing songs, and they can... Oh, wait a minute, Lou. Somebody come in the back way. Who is that? You're both me. Oh, Ella. Ella, come on in. Well, I thought 
about bus riding? Oh, you betcha. Hi, Ella. Hello, Lou. I wanted to see you, Ella, anyway. I wanted to borrow something off of you. <laughs> oh, you do, Em? Well, ask right away, and if I've got it, you're more than welcome. <laughs> well, Ella, I suppose your radio is pretty heavy, ain't it? Oh, yes, Em. Mercy, why, that thing must weigh 500 pounds. Oh, so nice. 500 pounds. No wonder it's got such a deep voice. Well, you wasn't planning on borrowing a radio, was you, Anne? Well, no. Because if it's a radio you want, why don't you just take my little one? Well, yes, Em, why don't you just take Lou's little one? Oh, well, I tell you, I had kind of gave up the idea of getting your radio over here, Ella, because I do have a little old radio thing myself. But I tell you, I so often think how lucky you are to have that little phonograph connection that runs right through your loudspeaker. Oh, well, you're welcome to play on that any time you want to, Em. Just come on over. So, Em, wasn't it that you wanted it over here Saturday night for the kids to use? Well, yes. Ella, I tell you, we're having in a bunch of high school kids that wants to play records and dance. And, of course, they just can't play records on a radio. So right away I thought of you. Oh, oh well... Fred's awful fond of that phonograph. I don't know what he'd do if it was ever broke, but you're welcome to it, Em. Oh, Ella, thank you. Oh, thank you, Ella. You can be sure the kids will just treat it like a baby. Oh, goody. You've got all your music solved now. Now, what you going to have to eat? Oh, I began working up the most sumptuous menu, and Junior told me no soap. He says all they wanted was popcorn and potato chips and Coke. Oh, well, I thought maybe they'd like something like hot cider and donuts. Oh, well, that's well, idea, Lou. Em, why don't you just ring in some extra food and set the rounds? <laughs> I know high school kids eating is their favorite entertainment. Well, I'll do that now. I'll even set out a chocolate cake. And I think a bowl of nuts to crack through the evening would be nice. Yeah, and why not apples, come on. Oh, I tell you, kids won't leave you tell them nothing. We sure used to have the parties, didn't we, when we was young? Oh, yes, them was the days. Remember how we used to just laugh ourselves silly at parties? Everybody brung a different kind of cake and pickles. And pies and cookies and candies. Oh, the boards on them sawhorses would just sag in the middle from the food. Oh, yeah, I remember the old fish fries. Oh, yeah, <laughs> they'd make a potato chip look <laughs> sick, wouldn't they? Yeah. Two suppers was nice, too. And think what all the kids is missing, never pulling taffy through an evening or making popcorn balls. Well, now, maybe all them things is coming back. You know, I see we're on account of the gas racing that they're going to have parties all winter long. At the schoolhouse. Oh, really, Ella? Mm -hmm. Can just anybody go to them? Yeah, everybody in one neighborhood will be there. That's the idea, you know. Oh, this winter will hark right back to the good old winners of Lot 9 and 10. The government's freezing mustaches and whiskers now, you know. Oh, really, Em? Well, why have they did that? Well, I mean, they froze razor blades, and nature will take its course. Well, it'll be interesting to see what kind of beards our men folks can grow through the winter months. Well, the girls had turned him down, and he went over to Magookan County for two years. And while he was there, he growed himself a nice, bushy beard and called an awful pretty girl. And when he brought her home, everybody in town was just amazed. He really did look lovely. Oh, and all the girls know that she'd never seen his real face though at all. Oh, <laughs> I bet you they was jealous then when he looked so pretty. Ah, uh, just as they was there, and probably eating their hearts out underneath. Oh, it just goes to prove that beauty is only beard deep. <laughs> <laughs> Well, maybe it'll do something this winter for some of our backward boys. They won't have to stand with their backs against the wall. They can come right in with their beards and join the party. <laughs> well, no, time party's wonderful. Oh, I can remember the fun we used to have on Halloween. Yeah, I'd get in to dress up and have an evening of horror. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and how we used to jump up and down and race around on those square dances. Oh, they was more fun. Oh, yeah. Oh, I loved them. Alamon right and Alamon left. <laughs> I tell you, though, I don't know if I'd have enough breath left in me now to do a square dance. Oh, me either. But I used to whirl around the room. Yeah, everybody'd lay the baby on the floor and hop into it. <laughs> yeah, and they hopped into it till dawn sometimes. Well, say, girls, when these kids come back, come back from their hay rack right? why don't we just whirl them into an old-time hullabaloo? Oh, yeah. Let you all know how to have a real good time. I'll tell you what. Let's do, let's start them off on a batch of taffy and then work them off into a square dance. Oh, I don't think you could do that, Lou, have taffy and square dances at the same time. All the dancers would get stuck up doing the dough see dough. We'd never get them separated. But you could do the square dance right in here, Em, if you just move out some of this furniture and junk. Pile it up in the dining room? Oh, no, put it clear out of sight upstairs. Well, listen, we need a collar for the dancers. Who can remember the calls they used to get? Oh, well, let me see now. I used to know a part of the one. 
There's one that starts down, a big foot up and a little foot down, like a jaybird walking on frozen ground. Oh, yes, Lou. Right hand crossed and a how de do. Come on, girls, let's try it. Give me your hand, Ella. Oh. <laughs> right hand crossed and a how de do. Left hand back and a how are you? Sides to the center and the ends divide. Oh, yeah. Swing on the center and swing on the side. Ends to the center and the ends divide. Yes, come down on the old car hide. Oh, how did I get right <laughs> over here? <laughs> I don't know. I sprung out on the old car. Hey, come on. Here with you, Clark. I think it does something like, uh, swing that gal and look so neat. Just swing that gal with a great big feet. Now oh, we turn around and swing the other way. Give me your other hand. <laughs> Swing that gal who is so tall. Swing that gal who'll be married next fall. Now grab your honey and stay around. Right back home in a single line. Ladies in the need and the death behind. <laughs> Do see do and away they go, whirling and spinning in the world of memories from the good old days. And now, instead of telling you housewives more about the good things you can bake with Pillsbury's best and rich flour, I'm going to bring you an important message from the Junior Red Cross. Their big drive for more members is now on, and it's the chance many young people have been waiting for. A chance to serve the Red Cross and the war effort right here at home. So, Mrs. Housewife, if you have a son or daughter in grade school or in high school, won't you help pass the word along to these young people about the Junior Red Cross? Activities of members are varied and interesting. They assist the senior Red Cross staff in home economics, first aid and industrial arts classes, write letters, send gifts, sew, knit, work in victory gardens, help in scrap salvage, and dozens of other important wartime duties. And this year again, as in 1917, 